All right, welcome back to KM6 LYW Radio, the show about amateur radio or ham radio with an emphasis on digital or data modes, moving information back and forth using amateur radio, reimagining radio in the information age. Hey, today we're going to talk about powering your HT radio using nothing more than a USB backup battery that you might already have with the magic of the power delivery port. Let's talk about that this time on KM6 LYW Radio. <laughs> yeah. All right, welcome back. I don't know. You guys are telling me if those are repeats, right? You know, we've got, I think this is video number 138. That means I've learned 138 jingles. Is that right? I'm actually having to look stuff up. I'm, I'm really not that talented. I have to like figure something out before each show. Anyways, that's not why we're here. Let's see if we can use nothing more than a USB backup battery to power our HT. So if you're an avid backpacker or someone's on the air person, you know power is everything. You've probably got maybe a little solar panel. You've got a, a, a little backup battery that you use to like get, recharge your cell phone. This is only five volts. And maybe you, you know, your, your radio is going to need 12 volts. So you probably maybe put together a buck converter like this. It goes from 5 volts to 12 volts. In fact, uh, you can get one that Baofeng makes. This is pretty cool. Um, it goes from 5 volts to 12 volts as well. But they have virtually no current capability. So you can't really transmit. And they make a tremendous amount of noise. So you can't even really receive uh, using these buck converter solutions on an old traditional USB backup battery. So really all this stuff was good for is just charging your radio overnight or when you're, when you're offline. So USB has gone through some uh, iterative upgrades. We have USB-C now, but we also have USB-C with power delivery. And there is there are batteries that have this new USB-C port and this is actual PD port. That's what you're looking for. So we are going to use the magic of PD ports to see if we can actually operate our HT radio, uh, including transmit, including full receive with no noise, using nothing more than the PD port on a backup battery you might already have. So let's see if uh, what we can do here. What, what we need is a, called a power or PD trigger device. Let me go over here. So this is the Nightcore battery we've got on Amazon. Um, you know that. They're 50 bucks more recently since Amazon days. So I like this one. It's a 10,000 milliamp or 10 amp hour battery. It's about six ounces, really good for the trail. You can charge your phone and now we can operate our radio on it. But what you need to operate your radio on it is called a PD trigger device. That's what these are. In fact, you can get two of them for 12 bucks. I bought two just because I knew I'd screw one up. Um, so um, you can, th this particular version actually has little solder pads. You can modify it so it'll do like a five, nine, 12, 15, and 20 volts. Um, it just, so just solder the output volt, the, the pads that you want for your output voltage, in fact. They have a little truth table here that tells you which pads of solder to get which voltage out of your PD trigger. So your PD trigger device, I don't have one actually here on me. What this thing does is pretends to be like a smart charging cell phone uh, for super fast charging. You know, every, every now and then you plug in your phone, it goes into super fast charging. Well, using power delivery, your phone negotiates a voltage and a current uh, level with the battery itself. So you're, if you've got a special cell phone, you know, any modern cell phone will do this, and it'll go into fast charge mode. What that's doing is that your cell phone's telling your battery to go ahead and kick it up to 12, 15, maybe even 20 volts, and give me a couple of amps, you know, give me like 30 watts um, so I can charge my phone, or even in some cases run a laptop. So what we need to do is to have our radio <laughs> convince this battery to kick up to 12 volts and we can do that with a PD trigger in line with the uh, the USB cable and the power cable. So I've got a couple of these that I've that I built and I'm going to show you how to how to put one of these together and the cable looks uh, a lot like this. In fact, it looks exactly like that. And the PD trigger module that you see on your screen is this little device right here. I already shrink wrapped it and soldered it, but this little device right here is that PD trigger module you see on the screen. And so let's put one of these together and see what we can do with our radio. All right, so this PD trigger will do four different voltages. It'll do five, seven, nine, and 12. And it kind of depends on which of these pads you short out with solder. So for 12 volts, I'm just gonna short out these two pads right here with a tiny blob of solder. And trust me, it is very small. This is a USB-C adapter. I think for nine volts, you would sh short this, these two and these two out. So that's what we're gonna do right here. We're gonna make a 12 volt PD trigger out of this device that I can uh, plug into uh, my amateur radio, my HT. 
And after holding my breath and being very still, I got a tiny ball of solder across those two pads after you're putting a little bit of flux on those. It's very small. Make sure you get that iron hot too. You don't want to melt that PCB board. Okay, we've got all of our parts here and the sequencing seems to be important. Sometimes it'll come up to five volts if you don't get it right. So connect the uh, PD trigger device to a USB-C to USB-C cable and then plug it into the Nightcore battery. It's in low current mode. That's what the white light means. Uh, which means it won't turn off if you're charging like earbuds or something. Let's plug that in. We see the battery comes on. There was some sort of negotiation that happened. Let's see what we got on the voltmeter. We've got... 12 volts, that's exactly what we want. And I think the sequencing is important. Um, if you plug in the USB cable first and then the uh, PD trigger module, you're just gonna get five volts. And honestly, the Yaesu is okay with the five volts. It'll be a receiver, but uh, don't even think about transmitting or, or mean, doing a meaningful charge. So 12 volts, we're good to go here. All right, we've got the same setup here, just receiving. We're doing uh, 100 milliamps or so. We're also got 12 volts coming out of that uh, that backup battery. And I'm going to go ahead and transmit at full power, and we're going to see what this shoots up to. So, where are we at here? This is KM6LYW radio testing. I'm at 1.6 amps, still at 12 volts. And that was on high, folks. That's a pretty good deal. Um, you'll notice at 12 volts, if you look at the specs on this battery, it's going to say 1.68 amps at 12 volts. I guess, I don't know why the radio was drawing that in specifically. If you attach the battery, you're going to get a little more as well. So I can actually turn the power down here just a little bit and see if come down to uh, half power. I think this is two and a half amps or two and a half uh, watts. Uh, this is KM6LYW radio testing. Uh, we've got one amp on the ammeter. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, just saving batteries. Uh, uh, lower powers is no problem with me so level three one amp on the the backup battery so i'm going to go ahead and say this is a success i'm probably going to make a more simple one of these without all of the complicated connections because i'm going to go backpacking and i need this to be as light as possible so i'm going to cut up a perfectly good power adapter hook it up to the pd module trigger module and plug that directly into this nightcore backup battery all right cool i'm pretty happy with this all right, that was fun. In fact, I'm really looking forward to going to the trail using nothing more than this uh, this cable battery radio combo. It's going to be super lightweight and much less complex. Hey, I also wanted to mention there's other PD trigger modules out there that you don't have to solder. Um, I can't vouch for this one because I don't have it yet, but I know these Yaesu radios tend to take a... Uh, a four by 1.7 millimeter plug. Um, a lot of times the issue will be the, the black plastic around the plug itself. So make sure you get something that fits your radio. But this is this one's already prefabbed. It's 12 volts, good to go. No soldering, just need a USB cable and you're ready to rock. So do a little research on the, uh, the PD trigger modules and let me know what you come up with for your radio in the notes so people can buy the, the, the right device. All right, guys, thank you so much for, for watching today. Um, I've got to thank the patrons at the patreon.com slash KM6LYW radio. We've got Steve, Andrew, NW2W, Foo, BS, Chris, Jeremy, Paul. Um, there are a lot of you now. So these are patrons who uh, are not only supporting the channel, but they get access to the DigiPi SD card image, which is a Raspberry Pi uh, data mode transceiver so all data modes on a raspberry pi and you can access all of them using nothing more than your uh, your pc or your laptop or even your phone so if you have a raspberry pi a digipi sd card image and a phone that uses wi-fi and or bluetooth you get access to every radio data mode there is just plug your radio into your raspberry pi do some quick configurations and you get fta all aprs packet modes js8 call everything by being a patron of km6 lyw radio in fact you got to here and you can see digipi rocking all the different modes and again this is all done via your laptop or uh, your phone here it is digipi working on your phone here you're sending mail with a tablet all oh, and running fta all within a web browser on any device you have over wi-fi all right patrons thanks for helping out with the channel i really appreciate it so let's uh, let's power our rigs using uh, simple usb batteries in uh, pd trigger modules totally cool hey my name is craig i'm in california and i am clear